Greetings and high energies to each one of you from here at the Black Covered Bridge. Here's another video for bridge walkers where Michelle and Rev come together in good ways to build bridges for us to cross and become one with one another and to share about building bridges within ourselves and beyond with the cosmos. First, this amazing bridge behind me reminds me that we are bridges. We're bridges to the more that's within us and beyond us. Last time we discussed how we are bridges that are on ships where the controls are and the decisions are made and where the captain controls the ship, regulates the ship. You are the captain of your ship. Here's an interesting teaching from this covered bridge. Why is it covered? Why? To shield the trusses and deck from the elements. Remember, we're talking about wooden structures here. They say wooden bridges that are not covered have around a 20 year lifespan and covered bridges can last upward of 100 years. As you are a beautiful bridge, you also have a cover over your bridge to protect you and create a life of purpose and meaning. The cover is your heart of pure love and compassion and your mind, your thoughts of pure love and your inner essence. You are a being of the cosmic more full of divine purposes. Note that was plural, purposes, and you are crammed full of divine potential. This bridge has had purpose and potential for a very long time. We need to trust ourselves in ever deeper ways. Listen to your inner ways. And there are many to assist you that some call guides. Rev Ned uses the term watchers. Our cover over our bridge is strengthened when we mesh our loving heart with our loving thoughts and they come together. This in itself is building a bridge within us which helps us cover us with purpose and meaning and stability. We have so much within us to help us navigate our own ship. Even when the storms come our way, storms are sacred and teachers for sure. Bridges take us from a point A to a point B. Normally level, they take us over ravines and gullies and great bodies of water. So bridges give us a, a higher perspective so our vision physically and spiritually can see things from this higher perspective. From this higher perspective, we can listen with our physical ears, which are portals, and with our spiritual ears. We listen within our sacred beings, and we listen beyond our sacred beings. Also, beautiful ones, we can use our sense of smell from our bridges. Again, using our sense of physical smell and our sense of spiritual smell when the wind people blow in and when the spiritual energies and entities blow in. All the four mentioned are covers for our bridges to protect us and maintain our spiritual being in these physical bodies. Rev Ned loves visiting this cover bridge for many reasons. I think of the tree people it took to create this beautiful structure. Here's another teaching point this covered bridge can demonstrate to us. This bridge was connected to a grist mill and a sawmill originally, and now is part of a trail system for this community that goes over Talawanda Creek. Again, the purpose of this bridge, which it's in its original location to access the mills, is now used for a trail system. As we grow and mature and blossom, for many of us, changes, transformation happen in our purposes. Our purposes can and transform us as we grow and expand into our unique cosmic print. Here's another incredible lesson from this covered bridge and creation itself. During a filming here a couple months ago, coming from down in the creek way below, a vine came up and attached itself to the bridge and grew up into the support post. What is still down in the deep essence of our being, your being, that needs to rise up and grow and be utilized in living ways with your cosmic purpose and help unwrap even more of your potentials. One final lesson from Black Covered Bridge here is there is an opening at each end. It is a portal. You are a portal. Since you're an amazing bridge, you are a portal, or what Lakota holy man Frank Bullsgrove would call a hollow bone. You are such more, so much more than what the culture tells us that you are that I am. Trust the sacredness of yourself, all the stuff you've gone through, and you're still here. Just as this bridge is an amazing gift in so many ways, you are an amazing gift that you can unwrap each day. Yes, 
You're a being of love and light as you travel around the galaxy. You're a bridge to all that is. This bridge reminds me of love every time I come here and every time I cross this magnificent structure. You are a bridge to love and light and to the cosmic more, no matter what is going on in your life. Beautiful energies embrace you in delightful ways. Thank you for being here with us on Bridge Walkers. Thank you for being here. I love your videos, Rev Ned. Thank you so much. That's why I love to start our show with that beautiful video. You do such a good job. And welcome, everybody, to Bridge Walkers. Welcome, welcome, welcome. We're so excited. I'm Michelle Ambergy. I am the Awakener. I am one of many. And if you're here watching, chances are you're an Awakener too. And that all that means is that we're here to awaken ourselves. We're all here doing it together. Just like Rev Ned was, was talking about, you know, we're all together in this. It's not me and you, it's us. It's we. And so we're so grateful for you being here. We're welcoming Christy and Celine is here already. We've got watchers and peoples. We've got seven people watching. Welcome, 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 dear friends. Um, and so, Rev, Rec, um, tell us a little bit about you. Tell us a little bit about you. I want everybody to get to know you a little bit more every time we do our shows because you're such an amazing man. You're such a beautiful soul. And it's, I'm so honored to be here with you. This is so fun. One, one of the things I feel very led to share is ever since I was um, a kid, I was blessed to be here. My mom was not supposed to get pregnant. I'll back that far up. I wasn't supposed to, my brother is six and a half years older than I, than I am. And, she, and, and the doctor said, no more kids after him. And then... Um, I came along, I popped in and you're not done yet. I got worked it down here today and I, I choose you mom, but they, they wanted to um, abort me because of problems and situations mom was having in her. And she said, Nope, Nope. Dad said, Nope. So here I am. But ever since I was little, I've had arthritis um, that I've dealt with my, my whole life. And then you throw in, um, Nine and a half years ago, I was bit by the brown recluse and the Lyme. Wow. Last year was the stroke. And I'm getting to all of this. There's a stroke and a little heart problem. And I've learned out of pure love that those are all bridges. All bridges to the more. The more that's within me. Things that I would have took, I believe, I was told it would take me a longer time to bring them out and learn if it wasn't for these bridges of health challenges mm -hmm. that, that, that I had. And one of the things is gratitude. It's just expanded. And I have this incredible little Zen parable, Zen story of, of gratitude, but that's been a key, which has opened up to many other incredible ways of the pure love pure light but yeah. being grateful being thankful through all of this um when i first was diagnosed with lyme my blood went from where i live in ohio all the way i even pictured it today they said it would be heading towards a plane that day when i gave my blood i visualized my blood traveling in a plane to california You've heard of that. Yay, thing, right? California. <laughs> <laughs> and there's a special lab in Palo Alto that took my blood. And mm -hmm. they were the ones that um, said I had chronic Lyme. And my Lyme doctor at the time said that, wondered why I was still walking. Yeah, I was using maybe a cane or a rollator. He said, you should be in a bed. You should be in a chair. But it was the spiritual bridge that I was on when all this happened. Yeah. And it really, really helped secure that I didn't fall into that. Well, I'll be like this the rest of my life. I won't be able to do this. I'll be in a... And oh, the key to all that, that bridge was gratitude. Just giving thanks. Giving thanks that I could um, do things normally. Get a shower. 
walk, even if I needed assistance, so I could be on my own, didn't have to depend on my an incredible, incredible wife. And it was the same last year, a year ago in July, when I had the stroke. I mean, I didn't know my family. I couldn't, I, could, I didn't know how to take a shower. I forgot to have floss. I didn't know how to, to text. Um, oh, wow. I couldn't write. And I had to go through all those therapies. But when I started coming back a little bit, it was like, thank you. Thank you. And I'd have gratitude. Thank you. And it seemed like it was expanding within me. And then it, 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 it invited these entities that come in the room of pure love. And that's when change really, really, really happened. But it started with thank you mm-hmm. and gratitude and gratitude. So gratitude. Yeah. Three illnesses and sicknesses. Gratitude. Yeah, gratitude is the key. And that's, you know, that's that's what we're talking about today um, is about illness and the healing journey and how what you learn along the way in that um, is is that that bridge to your your spiritual growth. And, you know, we kind of started doing this show because Rev Ned and I were chit-chatting and talking and you know it was, it was so fun to find a friend you know that we can just be like oh my gosh just talk we talk and talk and talk and <laughs> both realized that we both had been on a healing journey that we both had had you know these autoimmune diseases and you know have have some pretty serious stuff and yet we both found that that journey was part of our spiritual journey and recognizing that being able to have the gratitude and so we, yes. that's why we wanted to share this. We kind of wanted to share our stories with everybody and and our insights and what that is about. And Reb Ned has had some some crazy stuff happen with him, you know, and a lot of you guys know that, you know, I've um, been very ill for about 10, 12 years and I'm actually in a wheelchair right now. But it's interesting because I know I'm not supposed to be in this wheelchair. And, but what I've learned and everything has been fantastic. So before we go any further, I want to start. Oh, I just got chills. Um, before we go any further, I just want to start with a little prayer. And just for all of us, you know, prayer is such a powerful thing to do. And it's it's part of that journey. It's part of that spiritual journey. And if any of you are struggling with um, any kind of chronic anything, you know, and it doesn't even have to be like, like what would be deemed an illness or a disease or anything, but even just, you know, simple things, you know, with, with chronic, um, not feeling like doing what you're supposed to do. I mean, it, it falls into all of that, but there's so many people right now. And especially the, the, the light workers and the healers and the intuitives and the, what we call the indigos and the star seeds and, and everything, you know, seem to really get hit with this kind of stuff. And it's so important that we talk about it. It's so important that we we open ourselves up and really talk about it because it is it is a path. It is part of our path. It's part of our awakening. It's part of our spiritual growth. And the more we share our stories and the more we we hear each other's stories, the more we can hold each other up. So let's start with a little prayer. We're just going to call that very thing in. And we just go sacred and holy presence of love and light. We call upon you. We call upon all that is love and light within each and every person who is listening to this, who are listening to it, whether it's live or later, we call upon all the people connected to them, all of the love and light connected to them all the way out into the (laughs) extensive vastness of our universe we just call upon the love and light within all life and we just say thank you thank you for being here thank you for being a part of this thank you for life we call upon beloved mother earth we call upon beloved father sky we call upon those great beings of love and light to the east and the great beings of love and light to the south and the great beings of love and light to the west the great beings of love and light to the north. And as we call upon Mother Earth and Father Sky, we hold that sacred center because we are that sacred center. We stand in the center of this beautiful space and we are the love and light right now. We are that presence. And so we we call that up. We call that up from within because we are that 
I am that I am. And when we do this, we don't need to call to that which is outside of us to come to us. We have it all within. We are the sacred completion as the one. And not the one just me, but the one that is me. It's all within. It's all within. And we begin to shift that. We begin to realize how powerful and how beautiful we all are. And so we call upon that to just rise up from within each and every one of us and to just begin to radiate out into the world that love and that light. And we're so grateful. We just say thank you, thank you, thank you for this presence. Thank you, thank you, thank you for all this presence because it does encompass, you know, the great beings of light, the, the angels and the archangels, the great masters, the holy guides that are animals and our star families and everybody. It's all there. And it's all within. And so we just say thankful. Thank you for this understanding. Thank you for this mess, the messages that we're receiving here today. And just thank you. <laughs> That's all there is. Just thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And as we state this, we know that it's all done. It all is. And so it is. Oh boy. Wow. That was that was that was, that was beautiful, Miss. <laughs> Thank you. I was feeling, I was feeling like these energies coming up. I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> so yeah. Oh, engaged Reiki is here. Yay. I've, so heard, we are, I've heard of that guy. Yeah. That Kevin, the Kevinator. The Kevinator. It was funny. <laughs> Kevin, we were, we were, Rev was saying he's the Revenator and you're the Kevinator. And I said, I want to be the Baconator. <laughs> And Rev was like, <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> so fun. So fun. We just welcome everybody here. And, you know, when we do these kind of shows, you know, we really want to bring everybody into that space of sacred presence and sacred awareness that we're able to to recognize that even though we struggle, even though we have hardships, I mean, that's part of being human, right? There's so many blessings within, the, within that. There's so many, so many beautiful moments of goodness. And even when something hurts or something is just like such a trial and struggle, when you shift into that, thank you. Thank you. Um, I, I had my granddaughter here this weekend. And she's eight years old and she's just, she's just smart as a whip. You know, it's like, oh my gosh, these kids are getting smarter and smarter. And I was having a lot of pain. I had pain in my hips. I'd hurt my hips years ago. And, you know, it's kind of my back is out. My hips are messed up. And the shell and named her Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. And it was funny when I was walking um, to get to my chair and every time I would step, it was so painful. And I was just going, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And my granddaughter looks at me and she goes, why are you saying thank you, Grammy? And I said, because I'm grateful that I can even be taking these steps. And she goes, but it hurts. And I'm like, yeah, but I'm walking. And she just went, oh, you know, it's those little <laughs> tiny things that we can teach yeah. our children too. You know, and, and believe me, it, it was thank you. <laughs> was it like fluffy thank yous? But they all matter. Yeah, they all matter. And so I kind of wanted to share that with you guys because she's such a she's such a cutie patootie. And so, Rev, you know, we were talking about this process of being ill. And you and I both have these um, autoimmune diseases. And a lot of doctors didn't know what this was even five years ago. They were still a little bit confused as to what was going on, you know, and I know I went oh, to yeah. the doctor several times just saying I'm exhausted and I'm in pain and I don't know why, you know, and they were like, well, you're a woman and you're whiny. And so go home. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and I actually had one doctor tell me um, that maybe if I would quit complaining and get off the couch once in a while, my life would be a little bit better. And I got, I got so mad. He left his clipboard on the table and I picked it up and threw it at him. I was so angry. And there's a part of this dealing with, you know, medicine and we need our medical doctors. 
you know, and it's, and, but it could be so frustrating because these autoimmune things, especially they're very elusive and they're very strange and they tend to go along with just exhaustion for no reason, um, kind of a process. And I know with you, with Lyme, you get this thing where it's like, you're, you're tired and you're exhausted and things aren't getting done and you learn to kind of let things go. You learn to realize what really matters and what you can live without. Another blessing, right? But Correct. then you start getting your energy back and you start having a few good days and it's like, mm-hmm. woo, and you start doing all the things you can do and you make the phone calls and you get this stuff done and you clean in the house and blah, blah, blah. And then it's like, and <laughs> down it goes again. And sometimes it can be so frustrating, you know, but we learn to begin to work with the cycles of these things too. And it's so important because life is cyclical. Life is spiral. And so another blessing with experiencing this stuff is learning to be in the moment, learning to go with what is happening now not by the list. And I'm, I'm a Virgo, so I'm a list keeper. If you guys, matter of fact, I'm going to show you this really quick. This is just the first three days of my life. All the things that I need to get done because I'm having a good day. These last few days, I got all kinds <laughs> of energy. I'm going, I'm like, I'm getting everything done. Boom, boom, boom. And then comes, you know, the, the tired and the exhaustion again. And we learn to work with those cycles I need to not be quite so busy when I have the energy, but it's kind of cool because it brings you into the moment. It's like, I might want to get five videos recorded and edited and, and onto my website by Friday, but you know what? It's not happening. And you learn to let go and you learn to be at peace that what got done is what needed to get done. And that time that you need to be down and to be quiet and to be still is what you need to be doing. And there's such a great blessing in letting go of the control that we all have over our lives to be and to do and to accomplish and get this done and get this done. And it's it's really a beautiful experience getting to have these 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 illnesses, these diseases, these chronic situations. I don't even want to put illness and disease on it. Dis-ease is a good word, but letting go into that. And I know something I struggled with too, because I got so upset with doctors as I was like, I'm never doing doctors again. And just kind of letting go Uh and allowing my own kind of intuition lead me to where I needed to go to find you know, those in the medical community that began to understand what was going on because it was so strange. Poor doctors. I felt so sorry for them. They're like, we don't know. We don't know. Did you run up against anything like that, Rev Ned, when you had the limes, especially? Oh, oh, very, very much so. I was going to do an addendum to what you, you said. When I was first trying to figure out what was wrong with I went to a neurologist at the, the big city down by the river and um, he put me on two wrong medications for six months thinking I had MS and, and something else. And this happens all the time, especially back then, you know, eight, nine, ten, year, ten years ago. Mm-hmm. And then um, when I was diagnosed and came up with an incredible Lyme doctor, um, he wanted me to see a neurologist to get testing done. And one of the neurologists that started this center um, basically told me, you're just a very depressed person and you just need to go put your feet up and die, chill out. So, and so many doctors, like you said, had no idea what chronic Lyme disease is. They had no idea. I mean, like family doctors and things like that. So besides those challenges, which helped create, I was, there's three co- leaders we we got a nice support group for chronic Lyme disease from a couple states because we live real close to to the border and um that was very beneficial but learning to love those people one that misdiagnosed and the one that was 
um, kind of mean to me in, in his room. And it was like learning to deal with, you have to deal with that energy, you know, you being belittled, you're not feeling good to begin with. So that's yeah. more on you. And then learning to utilize that. And again, yeah, I give thanks for this, this, and another doctor came in and then things happen. And now I have a neurologist that's incredible. She's a beautiful, <laughs> um, but it's this bridge of, of, of gratitude. And what I said in the video, how important and inspiring, two words, important mm -hmm. and inspiring to think what each of us have gone through, no matter what it is. And we're here right now. Yeah. I mean, to be thankful for that. And of course, the older you get, you have more experiences, more events right. that happen in your life. But we're we're still here, and we've gone through all these, no matter what it is. Yeah, you know, health, relationships, monetary, whatever it may be. Yeah, we're here. And how did we get here? And are there more bridges within us? Yes, that we can develop and find and discover. That yeah, connect this incredible bridges beyond the cosmos. Oh, yes. Yes. There's so much more. We're so incredible. We're not the little peons that were taught yeah. by, by the culture. We're, we're, we're actually powerful beings of love and life. We really yeah. like are. Absolutely. You know, it's interesting when you're talking about that, RevNed, I'm seeing almost like each of us standing at a, a, a place of you know, where we're starting on a, on a spiritual growth path, you know, where maybe we just found out we have an illness or maybe we're struggling with addiction or maybe we have bad relationships or, or, you know, whatever, whatever our thing is and seeing all these bridges coming off from right where we're at. Right. And we have choices of the bridges that we're going to walk across and we can make our own bridges too. We can build our own bridges, yeah. but in this visualization that I have, our bridges connect with other bridges too, right? Like my bridge connected to your bridge. And that's why we're here today. And our bridges are connecting to everybody who's here and welcome Jillian. I'm so happy you're here. Jillian Aww. saying gratitude is everything. She's and from the North, the North winds. Go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> and it's so wonderful when we can start seeing the beauty of all of this right when you can start seeing it as part of your path and not as a wall in front of you or something yeah. that is insurmountable because that happens with a lot of people too um because i know in, in my younger years i struggled with depression too you know and i remember my mom saying one time she said why do you think you're always so depressed and I looked at her and I said, because nobody loves me. And she just went, oh, and it, it, I think I a little bit broke her heart, you know, but a lot of times that, that was what, and, and the key words there were, I think that's what I was thinking. And that thinking, what I was thinking about not being loved was what was causing the depression. And when I started on my spiritual journey and some of the first things I learned is what you're thinking, you know, is creating your reality. And I was kind of like, really? And I started paying attention to what I was thinking. And because I'm a Virgo, I think a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Virgos tend to be a little compulsive, but that, you know, it's what you're thinking about. And I remember changing that from nobody loves me to I'm loved and I'm important and I'm special. Took me a while to get to where I'm sacred and holy, but baby steps, right? Baby steps. Well, this, that, this is a portal in, out, and we have control of that. Yeah. Like, that's what you're saying. Yeah. It's another bridge. Yes, it is. Where are you, where are you going to build your bridge to? Are you going to build it to nobody loves me land? Or are you going to build it to everybody loves me land? I like that bridge better. <laughs> you know, when I was preparing for tonight's bridge walkers, I was shown I could have built a bridge of disgust, revenge, blame. Yep. 
that person did that. This system did that. And and there's people that are on, they built that bridge, you know, and it's, it's destructive. The bridge rots, it falls apart eventually. And we all get there. I mean, there's things when that doctor told me to just, I was actually very hurt when he told me to prop my, go home, prop my feet up and just, you know, pass away basically. Wow. It was very hurtful, but I had those energies, but they didn't last long because I started, I've learned to give thanks immediately. Yeah. And what happens? They shift and they expand into incredible energies, visitations, insights, downloads that come into our heart, to our mind. And I mean, us crossing paths with our bridges connecting is, is part part of that. Too. Yeah, because you do, you find your people, you find your people, you find those people who who are building similar bridges. You know, you can build your bridges alongside each other and hold hands as you cross over them. You know, there's so many wonderful things that can come from that. And I know... Um, Kevin's here and he's saying both of your stories hit hard, saying doctors failing me at my lowest point helped me to hit rock bottom and begin a new path towards holistic illness, illness, wellness. (laughs) (laughs) That was a little slip there. Sorry, Kevin. But yeah, it's true. And I know everybody who's on here has had those kind of experiences and so many people. And, And that's why we wanted to do this show. You know, is to say you're not alone and to really give yourself a pat on the back and, and, you know, um, you know, honor yourself for the journey. Cause this is hard. This is really hard. And there's a lot of people, places, and things that get in the way and some of them slap you down, but the ones that slap you down are the ones that make you get back up and start new, like what Kevin is saying, Right. You know, we are so amazing. Um, and something else that I wanted to share with everybody that I I did just kind of in from my intuition that was huge was I started reminding my body, speaking to my body, cells in my body, everything that you are a healing machine. This body, our physical bodies were created to heal themselves. And if we just get out of the way, if we feed it healthy food, pure water, like Rev Ned was just drinking his pure water, <laughs> and love on our bodies by reminding our bodies what they are. You know, um, there is, matter of fact, I haven't shared it yet. I'll put it out tomorrow. I found um, a little, I guess it's a meme, you know, a thing where it says it shows the human body and it shows that it is the most powerful technologically advanced structure on this planet. And they said, and people say it wasn't by design, right? I mean, our bodies are amazing, but our bodies we've been told and we've heard over and over and over that we're sick, we're ill, you're ill, you need pills, you need surgery. You you know, I can't remember, remember how many times I've heard commercials come on and it comes on really loud and it goes, you have cancer. And what we have the pill for it. It's like, whoa, talk about programming. Yeah. And so we have to step away from this and we have to start reminding our bodies that we are healing machines, that anything that is a dis-ease in our body is just that. It comes from outside sources and it comes from accepting that. And we have to start switching it over and talking to ourselves in these ways that reminds his body that it is a highly technological healing machine. And it knows exactly what to do. This body can even eat toxins and transmute them if we tell it and if we allow it to be that powerful. Not recommending it right now, people. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> That's in the future. We need to, we need to be good with it. But it's so important to honor this healing, this beautiful thing that was created by God and that it is designed for longevity and health and well-being. And to remind this part, to remind this part, to remind this part, to remind it all of who you are. Yeah. You're God. Even Jesus said so. He said, yeah. 
Yeah, I am. He said, I am. I am that I am. And he said, all we need to do is love, right? All we I, need to do is love. When I had the, the stroke a year ago in July, and again, I just, I didn't know my family. I didn't know what a clock on the wall was. I, I didn't know anything for the first two and a half, three days. And then they put me up in rehab when I started to coming around. But again, I couldn't, I couldn't do anything. Couldn't write. But the, I just kept giving thanks. When I got up to rehab, I just started giving thanks. And as I've shared so many times, I was listening to Mia Land on yes. the computer. That she, you know, I've heard angels in this, in the 3D here several, several times, ceremonies and other events. And she was the closest thing that I've heard that sounded like what I've heard. So I was, I'm in a chair, alarm, I can't move, I can't you know, walk. So I had the bed, had my bed right here. And I had a computer there. And I had this, the only thing I can say is a, a Merkaba. Oh, yep. And um, came to me and visited. That's a long story in itself, but it was pure love. Both of these came in as pure love. And that's when just sitting there for her, listening to her before the visitation came, it was like, thank you. Thank you. At least I'm sitting in a chair. I'm sitting in a chair. I was so thankful and the, the energy was changing in the room. And this is when this high high-density being came in of pure love and stayed Tell us about, about the hat for about an hour and it was like this download of energy physically mentally spiritually emotionally and it stayed in that room till the day i left i was there 13 days in the hospital with, with the stroke uh -huh. and it's like because it, there's something here for us so this was the bridge that came. This is the bridge you're going to walk. My therapy from that moment on skyrocketed. I just, I was doing incredible things physically. And I used to be a pretty good big time weightlifter. So I knew what determination and, you know, hang in there and just go, go deep down to, to do what I needed. And these are just simple little tasks that I was doing with weights and walking and tossing and turning and those kind of things with with different objects, but the progression kept happening. They worked with me with my, they would give me a piece of paper and I'd have to read and try to figure out this. It's so hard how to write. I had to learn to like rewrite. And I can remember, I took 45 minutes one time to an hour to text the Kevinator. And I was in the hospital bed on a lawn wow. and I couldn't do it. Something, I hit something and it disappeared. And so I had all those frustrations, but when those, that visitation came in through her music and through this Merkaba, when I went home, I went home on the, my wife's birthday on the 20th of July. Wow. The next day I'm out Now I'm recovering from a stroke. The next day I'm out on our zero turn. We have five acres. My mama was cutting. She has her tractor, which I think is sexy. She cuts the pasture and I cut <laughs> the rest of it. And for many months until the heart stuff in the fall, I was like, I hadn't felt that good since before life. But things happened. But I learned that, the, you know, when the heart came in the fall, the heart problems came in the fall. It's just, I can do this. I, we're just going to build another bridge of giving thanks, of love. Yeah. And the things that I've learned, when you talk about timing and energy, I've learned, like today, today was the wife put the garbage can out to the road. We live out in the country. I told her I'd get my trekking pole. We have gravel. So I have a trekking pole that works real good in the gravel. And I said, I'll waddle. I'll waddle out and get the, which it's a pretty good walk out there and back. And because I had, I learned how to conserve my energy. If I know yeah. I have to get ready for a show, an interview, um, to conserve my energy. Yeah. And it's like I'm being more responsible. It's not like I'm, it, it's amazing. And you wrap that in love, and you wrap, sorry, and wrap that in light. 
it's um it's an amazing beautiful cosmic thing and some of the days i sit on the back deck of oneness i just write and i create and i meditate and i think and pray um but the biggest thing is giving thanks. I use incense to give thanks. I lay down tobacco to give thanks. Yeah. I use flour, corn flour, very feminine to, to give thanks. And it's kind of what the that little Zen parable that was given to me by the watchers is about, is totally about, about gratitude. Ooh, let's read that. And also I would tell you Dana Sparks is here. Is that your sparkles? That's sparkles. That is I've sparkles. heard about you, Dana. And Kathy is here too. Look at, we've got so many people watching. We've got 11 people here, Rev. Aww. And Aww. we just love you guys. Thank, yes. Thank you so much for, for being here. Yeah. For being here. Yeah. When, I, when I was given this parable, it's not something I looked up online. I asked the watchers and I said, I need like a, a Zen parable. Because I love those types of, of stories. And I was thinking of a Kevin Nader for obvious reasons when, when this was given to me. So here's this, which was given to me. A young Zen priest wanted to go visit the holy man on the mountain to find out how he was enlightened. What were the bridges that he crossed each day to stay enlightened and to expand his awareness of pure love and pure light? So he set out on this journey, and it was far, far away. And many bridges he had to cross, and he would think to himself about the bridges that he had crossed in his own life. And he'd have to go over big rivers, and big ravines that were way down there. But as he got closer and worked his way up the mountain, he was thinking of the questions to ask this holy man. Because he knew deep in his heart that he would meet this holy man on top of the mountain. And as he got closer, he noticed there was a mountain here and a mountain here with a huge valley in between and one single walkway bridge to the other side. And he thought about it. And he said, for me to expand my awareness, I need to go across this bridge to see the Holy One. And he walked across this bridge. And there in the cave that he was told was the Holy Man. That was his home. It was in the side of this mountain. And the holy man welcomed him. And they sat in quiet for a long period of time, enjoying one another's energy. And the holy man knew there was something very special about this young Zen priest. And this young Zen priest finally asked, when he felt it was the appropriate time to ask, a holy man. He said, what is your practice? What has brought you to this level of enlightenment? What is your practice? What kind of meditation do you do? What kind of study do you do? What kind of sutra do you do? What kind of ritual do you do? What kind of precepts do you use? And the holy man with love radiating from him and light. And he says, those all have a place, yes. But my practice, my practice I learned a long time ago to cross this bridge of gratitude. To even give thanks to the very small things. To the wind people against my face. To the water people that give me drink. To be grounded to the earth. And to feel the fire of our star that's within me. Is to give thanks. To cross this bridge of gratitude. 
Yes, it'll shift things within you. And you've come this far to learn something so simple. I sense you will do that. Sadhu. So in other words, every circumstance, no matter how complex, challenging, frustrating, contains a positive seed that can be nurtured by us. By us. Mm. Mm. Oh my gosh, everybody just take a breath and soak that in for a minute. Wow. That was beautiful, Rev Ned. You know, that's why the great teachers teach in parable and story. Yeah. You know, you can really, wow, you can get that point across. And, you know, we all have a parable. We all have a parable within us. Yes, we do. We all have a story. And, you know, I want to invite you guys, everybody who's watching, whether you're watching this live or maybe you see this later, share with us your story. You can put a comment in down below here on on youtube or send it to us privately send it like on messenger or something like that we have we have contact information let us know your story we want to hear your story we want to hear your parable make sure your parable ends in gratitude <laughs> <laughs> make sure your bridge has has a couple of at least a couple of boards of gratitude. Usually towards the end, they they have a lot more gratitude boards. The beginning of bridges don't always have so much gratitude. <laughs> they have more like ow ow gosh darn it. <laughs> you know, there's a, a Zen saying. Let me get this right. Harmonizing with difficult situations. Mm. What would be the Mm. The found that gratitude, thankfulness, you know, yes. harmonizing with difficult situations. If I could mm. expand on that, our patch, he's our elder dog, somewhere around 15 years. And he went to the vet here recently for his checkup, his year, yearly checkup. And he can hear. I mean, the vet knows that. And we would just reaffirm that he can't hear. But his sense of smell. I mean, his brother's 10 years younger. He has a better sense of smell than these younger dogs do. And the doctor says it's just like humans. So, okay, this is very important. These are incredible bridges across. Since I'm limited a lot of times to physical energy and doing physical things, that my other senses have developed just like his did for sense of smell. My other spiritual senses have truly developed that would have never develop if I would have been 100% healthy. And I've been told that by, by the watchers, that there's reasons why you're going through this world, reasons why you came here to experience these things and to expand who you are. So, so, wow. so Patch was a great lesson here recently about, that was like, hmm, hmm, yeah, that's true. <laughs> That it is. It's so true. We wouldn't have to turn to those deeper parts of ourself if we didn't have the hardships. And, you know, I, I worked with a psychiatrist on my, my J-O-B job. My, my third dimensional job is I do accounting and bookkeeping or did. I don't do it anymore. I'm fully a spiritual teacher and everything now. I'm one, one accounting client left. Um, and she was doing a dissertation, like her third doctorate, on trauma wow. and how it opens up the spiritual senses, right? And like like how people that are, are psychic, which we're all psychic, right? But they're psychic that are super sensitive, the highly sensitive people, the people that are very spiritual, how childhood trauma is related. She was building that bridge of awareness for people to do that. And she did a lot of people and she worked with people with addiction, 
that was her her business but she was also a very spiritual person and so she was building that bridge between the trauma and the addiction and the spiritual awareness because that's another bridge that so many people have been blessed to navigate is the the journey of addiction whether it's drugs or alcohol or or sex or gambling or food food is a huge addiction and it's it's amazing it's the same sort of journey the same journey like um like kevin was saying at that hitting the rock bottom right and then we have to turn to those deeper parts of ourselves to grow and to learn and that's where that's the spiritual part that's the yummy gooey nuggets of deliciousness you know i feel really i agree with you 100 percent. there was a um when I was bit by the brown recluse, because the Lyme had been in my body for a long time, they found out. And when I got bit by the brown recluse, you know, it eats your flesh. And I went through all that, passed out a couple of times, ended up in the hospital. But here are things. My friend, Uncle Dave, came, I'm going to start crying, came to visit me and, and when I was laying on my back and he gave me a stone very similar to this mm -hmm. much more our daughter found this when they were canoeing and said that's dad because you yeah. see the hole which is the okay and what in water feminine energy created that hole into this masculine so there there's both but Uncle Dave, I'll never forget this. He took that thing off, and it has the energy of very traditional Lakota family. That, and and he, and he put it in my hands and closed. He said, "This is yours." So that was an incredible bridge that expanded, and I loved him and adore him. But that moment, something mystical happened between us. And he's gifted me other things. But at that moment, it, it was a form of the spider medicine, as we say. Yeah. And that he took this sacred object, gifted it to me. I mean, I, can, I still feel the energy right now thinking about it. And I haven't thought about it in a while. But when we have that of giving thanks, and gratitude, even those situations become so sacred, so special, so harmonizing with the cosmic force and energy. Something you said that just went, came in, and I thought, I better share that. I better share that. <laughs> that was beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Because it is, you know, there are those moments, and, you know, moments like that are so spiritually guided too. You know, you know, spirit was working through him as well yeah. to to bit, bring that. You know, God works through all of us all the time. And the more that we're in that space and and listening and paying attention, you know, and allowing that guidance. And, you know, and that's part of what we're talking about today, too, is the, the kind of breaking down the barriers and the, the, the thinking and all that that lets us be in that. Sometimes it is through illness and disease and and you know addiction and and the other isms all the isms we can label yes and but what a blessing that when god can can move through us this yes very much so and with these diseases with these health challenges in seeing them with the eyes of the heart and the eyes of the mind with mm -hmm. gratitude, but the essence of gratitude, the visitations from higher entities, the higher energies have come like never before, like never before. And it was like, wow, I'm gonna just, because I have much time to sit on that back deck of oneness and just mm -hmm. think of these things, you know, and I write and I think and I create, and it's just, it's, it's a blessing. It's such a blessing for me. It really, really is. 
Yeah. This is amazing. I, and I, again, I want to thank everybody for being here. Now, everybody's going to watch us and into the future to, yeah. to bless you physically, mentally, spiritually, emotionally, and wrapping pure love and light around you with gratitude is the bow. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. It's a big pink gratitude bow. I'm choosing pink. I'll take pink. <laughs> <laughs> And we do, we really do want to, want to hear, and you know, it is those times, you know, that, that the mystical and magical can happen. Um, Rev Nev, when you were talking, and this isn't necessarily disease, but it's one of those times, you know, when you're kind of at your bottom, what do I do? I got in a car accident a while ago. I got rear-ended in the middle of traffic. And if anybody lives in LA or Orange County and understand what the traffic is like, the last thing you want to do is having an accident in the fast lane on the 405 freeway at four o'clock in the afternoon. But, um, you know, and I was scared and I was shaking, I was shaking like really, really bad. And I had had a bad day. I was coming back from physical therapy. Right. And all of a sudden this tow truck pulls up and he, you know, does what tow trucks do. They block the cars and pulls me over and this young man comes running up to the car from the, the tow truck and he gets down and he was the, the sweetest looking black man with these huge blue eyes. And he goes, are you okay? Are you okay? And I'm shaking. And I'm like, yeah, I'm okay. And he goes, are you hurt? And I said, I don't think so. I think I'm okay, but I'm shaking and I don't know what's going on. I don't know what's happening. And he's holding my hand. And then I look at him and his name is Michael on his shirt. And I looked at him and went, you're Archangel Michael. And he got this huge look on his face, tapped my hand and off he went, hopped in his truck and off he went. And right then the police came and the fire trucks and everything. And I wasn't hurt and the car wasn't that damaged, but it was the experience. But it was, <laughs> it was Archangel Michael coming through this beautiful young man with these most brilliant blue eyes I've ever seen. And, and as soon as I recognized who it was, it was, you're okay now. Wow. Have these experiences, you know, and I, I would love to hear from you these, these kind of experiences too. This is the kind of stuff that is so wonderful to share and to, to share with each other, especially when we're doing the bridge of dis-ease, <laughs> right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> to share the mystical because that's what the dis-ease is all about. We don't have these things to suffer or because we were bad or because there's a vengeful, hateful God. These are, these are opportunities. Our illnesses and diseases and addictions and isms. We used to, I use the word isms a lot. They're opportunities for us. Yeah. You, you know, I really think this is important for people out there. And I've been told all my life, I'm an anomaly. I love that word. You know, you're different, <laughs> abnormal, peculiar, um, deviate from the normal. normal. <laughs> but we all are one of a kind, unique. We need, we need to be us, why we came here. Everybody else is taken. Yeah, they, they are. Which I, I say that a lot on um, on my videos on on my channel. But I've always been that way ever since I was a kid and different, loving to be out in the woods by myself. Shoot, when I worked at the local university and I managed graduate international housing and bringing all this diversity together, you know, meeting people from 177 countries. Um. I was the only one in this whole huge campus, 16,700 16, students, 800 students. It's a good sized campus that had this job title. I was the only one. And they could never figure out what to call me, what to do with me. I <laughs> loved it. I didn't have to go to other, I was a manager. So I, I talked about doing managers. But I didn't have to go to managers. I said, just give me a chance. Let me run this operation on love. And I did. And it, it was so transforming, even for the residents that came from all these countries, just because I stepped out, had to be me, use my talents, buildings, gifts, my purposes, my potentials, and 
just to be me, but I did it in love and respect out of the system, even though I bucked the system in, in a positive way, I had to be me. I didn't want to be a robot from my workplace, you know? And they finally caught on and they let me do do my thing for a few decades. It was it was it was it was amazing. When I, oh I got a story. In the eighties I was in a seminary. You talk about me being an anomaly. <laughs> I love it. Um they wouldn't let me go in the first time. I was too 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 spiritual, too enthused about God. And then a priest friend said, Hey, you need to do this. You'll be good at this. You have what it takes to, to teach and do these kind of things. So I did. And I made it through uh, the first two years. One of the, the three female directors of this program, it's called the Lay Pastoral Ministry Program. One of them was a nun and she did not like Rev Ned at all. Uh -oh. I had a teddy bear, Rabbi Bear, that I'd bring into class and Rabbi Bear always had a saying. She hated that bear along with, with me. And she brought me in my, her room and said, you're nothing but butterflies and unicorns and magical stuff. I'm like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and she's the one that eventually I, they, they fired me. They booted me out my third year, which was a beautiful blessing. I learned lots of things, but I was an anomaly to them. I didn't fit into their, their puzzle. And I yeah. never have. I just don't, yeah. I don't, I don't fit in like that. And we need, every one of us needs to be who we are created to be, find our purposes, just like the bridge video, yeah. our purposes can change and tap into those potentials. And we got so many beings of love and light to help. Mm. And the dark so ones many. don't like that. The more, the more yeah. love and light that's being with us and surround us and that flows through us. Yeah. These bring bridges. Bring, the, bring those bridges <laughs> on. Yeah, because we do. We drop into this world that somehow wants us to conform to this one tiny little pattern. And, you know, that's not what we came here to do. We didn't come here to do that. We came here to be unique and to shine light and love and to love, you know, every single person who's on here, I can feel your energy and I can feel that you are love, you know, and not that you love, but that you are love. You're here for a reason. You're being drawn here to this. And whether you're here live or later, you're being drawn here because you are what we're talking about. You know, you are this love. You know what we're yakking about here. You get it. We all need to just shine. Yes. What is that song? I think it's um, a Pink Floyd song. It's Shine On, You Crazy Diamond. <laughs> mm -hmm. And it's it's funnerer. It's more funnerer. Like we were saying, Rev Ned, earlier. More funnier. Yeah. It's more funnerer when we can all do it together. And so we're so grateful that you guys are here. And I know we're getting nigh on the hour. And so we don't want to take up too much more time. But we just want to thank everybody. And Rev Ned, do you have anything that you want to finish up with, with your wisdom and your just amazing? Yeah, it's such a blessing doing this with you. Thank you so much. I I'll love this. Um, this has been um, incredible. You know, when we take the time to prepare for one another and to do these live and have these beautiful people jo join us. I can just feel there's something special going on. The energies are stirring and, and it's mm -hmm. very, it's incredible. But I am looking forward, Mighty Michelle, to, to next time because that's a very yes. special day in my life. Very yes, let's day. tell next everybody about this. We're going to go ahead. It's, it's a party. We, our next show, it's going to seem like it's a really long time. Um, <laughs> But it's going to be the end of November on the 29th of November. And we chose that. Whether we got a little bit of extra long time here to prepare because it's Rev Ned's near-death experience anniversary. And so we're going to hear in detail as much as he wants to share. I'll work on him between now and then. Um, <laughs> and, and what 
what happened and what the experience was, because this is, you know, these kind of experiences, they're moving through the portals, you know, you're moving through stargates when you're doing stuff like that. And that is huge. And so everybody mark your calendars for Tuesday, November 29th, 530 Pacific time for bridge walkers. And then we're going to talk about love and fear. Yes. We're going to talk about love and fear because it goes right along with it. Um, and then we're moving into the holidays too. And so, you know, we're, we're prepping for these holiday energies that are so wonderful. You know, they're so filled with so much glorious expectation and joy and family and anxiety and frustration. And we want to move into it in the love and in that gratitude and in that energy. <sighs> and I have a place. Um, where we'll make a video for the next bridge walkers, another little bridge. This is going to be a little bridge, not like the black covered bridge that we love. And the black covered bridge is real close to our house. So it's easy accessible and the wife helped me set it up. I just, we just love going there. But this one is uh, our son manages um, a park in the Five Rivers metro area. And he has a little bridge over a trail that I think will be perfect. My, nice. My, my, like they have a little farm, a little petting zoo there, so uh, it's a little dry for us, but that's what we're going to do, and um, and it'll be based on the near death experience and fear and love. Wow. The word is mu- if we put a hyphen after the F and and fear, what's the last three letters? E F R ear. Oh yeah. What is most fear comes into these portals. And we have control of that. We have control totally. of what comes into this. That's one yeah. place fear comes in. Just those ears. Oh, yeah. In so many different ways. So this is going to be so good. And I love your videos. I just, I get such a kick out of them. Mm-hmm. And I get, I get a, a little preview before you guys get to see them. And I just like, they just delight me. So Christy, thank you for coming, sweetheart. Go with love. Um, um, I blessing to you. Who was it? It was um, Kevin, I think. Said so. Oh, John Lennon song. Um, well, we all shine on. Well, we all shine on, like the da 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 in the sun. Yeah, so good, <laughs> so good. I love it. So we hope everybody that you'll join us. Thank you. Rev, for sharing your time and and being my friend. I just adore you. And I want to tell you, this was live on your channel. So whatever you did, you did it right. And so everybody on (laughs) Rev Ned's channel, we're so excited because we're we're putting this out in my YouTube channel and his YouTube channel and my Facebook page at Intuitive Michelle Ambergie. And I think we can get it on your Facebook page too, um, Rev Ned. So maybe next time we can get it out because we just want to share our love with you. We love you guys. Yes, we do. We That's love why we're you here so much. Yeah. That's why we're here. And we're just so happy. So everybody have a beautiful, beautiful evening and a beautiful week, a beautiful month. We'll see you in a while. And don't forget, you know, Rev Ned and I are around her on Facebook and YouTube and Instagram. We've got our Instas on. And come play with us in other places, too, because we love you wherever we are. And we love you wherever you are, too. Yes. So yes. thank you. I mm. blessings to each and every one of you. Good energies wrap you in love and light. Yes. Mwah. With that pink bow of gratitude. With the big pink bow of gratitude. <laughs> Bye, everybody. Bye.